Hello everyone. Let's uh, continue with uh, the interpolation in pandas, okay, where we left it yesterday, okay. And first of all, let's uh, first understand what's interpolation, what's the difference between interpolation and extrapolation, okay. And then we can start using those concepts in the already implemented functions and methods in pandas, okay. So, first of all, uh, interpolation versus extrapolation. Okay, let's uh, think of, in this case, and in this case, we have a couple functions, okay, with, of which we know the, uh, for these three points, for example, we have for point one, point two, and point three, we know x1 and y1, x2 and y2 and y3 and x3 okay in our case interpolation means uh, inferring the value of uh, of the coordinate of the y coordinate uh, for those uh, uh, x values that fall within our known range okay in our case our known range is uh, the all uh, the, the the three points uh, one two and three okay because we know both the x and y coordinate for one two and three okay so this is our known range okay and interpolation is for example calculating or inferring for this value uh, here x okay what would be the y coordinate okay that's an unknown and this is what interpolation allows us to do okay always uh inferring values within our known range on the other hand extrapolation is doing a similar approach but for values outside our known range okay so let's imagine here we have two points again one and two okay we have x1 y1 y2 x2 Okay, and extrapolation in our case would be given that we know the points one and two, this is our known range. Okay, what would be the value of this new x? Okay, this would be our unknown thing. What's this uh, y value for x? Okay. So that's the difference between interpolation and extrapolation. This will be useful for, for example, for uh, machine learning when we are learning about uh, tree-based algorithms like uh, decision trees, uh, random forest, or uh, gradient-boosted uh, uh, trees. Uh, the tree-based algorithms can interpolate really well, but cannot extrapolate. On the other hand, linear regression interpolates and extrapolates. Okay, so that's. That's the difference and that's where we will find it useful, this concept here, okay? So now that we know what interpolation is, okay, let's start with a simple um, simple approach for it, which is, well, the most simple, in fact, which is the linear interpolation, okay? So the linear interpolation is the method used by pandas by default when you call df interpolate here, okay? So, as mentioned, uh, the default value is linear, okay? And we can always choose other methods, passing the argument method using any of these values here, okay? Today we will go only go through linear, but I recommend you to read the, the other ones because, for example, for time series or for um, some um, original distributions of data, one some methods can be more useful than the linear methods. In fact, there will be... Uh, almost in every case there will be a better method than linear okay so let's understand what linear interpolation is going back to our original example in which we knew of a function and uh, only a couple points that we know both values for x and y okay let's do it again okay we know the uh, point a and point b Okay, xa 
yA, yB, xB. Okay, and the function that passes through them is this one. Okay, so what if we now want to calculate the value, the y value of this x here? Okay, this is a, a use case of interpolation, finding a value that falls uh, within our non range. Okay, so in this case here, linear interpolation allows us to leverage on well-known concepts like uh, uh, the slope of a line and the Thales theorem, okay, in order to calculate or estimate or create a good estimation for this point here, okay? Let's break this problem in uh, pieces, in smaller pieces. There seems to be something wrong here. Okay. So um, if we uh, remember from our high school days, we remember that the equation of a straight line is represented by this equation, okay? Where x and y represent the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate of each one of the points that are in our uh, straight line, okay? And m represents the slope where n represents the intersect, okay? What this concept means, what uh, these concepts mean is, again, if this is our straight line, okay, we know that this point here, where our line intersects the vertical axis, is the intersect, and this is m, okay? And m, or the slope, okay, represents the tangent of the angle that our line forms with a horizontal. Okay? So, these two arguments here allow us to create all of our lines, all of, all of the points in our, in our line, by multiplying uh, the slope by each one of the x-coordinates, adding the intersect, and you would get the value of y. Okay? So, now that we know the uh, basic equation, okay, knowing the basic equation and also uh, knowing some uh, trigonometry, okay, the only thing we need to remember from trigonometry is that in a triangle like this, okay, where this is a 90 degree uh, angle, okay, if we have uh, this angle here called alpha, the tangent of alpha, okay, is represented by this value here, okay, divided by this side here, okay. So now we have it graphically, let's put names to each one of these uh, yellow and green sides, okay? So the, for the yellow side, if we create a couple points here, A and B, just the same as we had in the original example, okay? We know that this uh, tangent of alpha Okay, and following the same uh, the same structure that I have here, yellow divided by green. Okay, yellow represents yb minus ya, and green represents xb minus xa. In the end, this is the the length of the uh, uh, yellow uh, side divided by the length of the green side. Okay, and this is the derivative also. Okay, of the function y in, uh, in the point x, but this is uh, a concept that we will use further ahead, okay? So just uh, stick, let's stick to this, okay? And now that we, now we know how to uh, relate the concept of tangent with, <coughs> sorry, with the concept of the coordinates of our points a and b, okay? So now that, now we know the equation of, uh, of our straight line, which is here, Okay, we also know this other equation that uh, uh, correlates uh, our points with the tangent. Okay, so now let's move one step ahead. 
and relate all this with interpolation okay so what we had in the beginning was these two points a and b okay each one of them this is y a this is x a each one of them have their coordinates okay x b and y b and we had a function that passes through them okay so our problem was given this x how can i calculate a good enough value for y okay how can how can we do this so with what we have learned okay we can make we can force a triangle pass through all these points the known points a and b okay and what we can say is by using the properties of the triangle the tangent and also the equation of uh, our straight line we can say okay i don't know what's the value of y okay this one here that passes through the function but i can make an approximation and say that the approximate value instead of y here okay is this one here let's say uh, y hat okay so how can we calculate the value of y hat let's remove some of the unnecessary stuff from here okay and let's draw only the triangle okay with our point a with our point b with our x and our y hat okay so now that we have this okay we can use the same concept of as we have used here for the tangent okay and also relating this to the uh, to the Thales theorem since this angle here is the same as this angle here okay because this line passes through the three points y a y hat and y b okay we can use this uh the same approach okay so now we know that if we call this alpha one and alpha two and since this is a straight line alpha one equals alpha two okay we can also say that tangent of alpha one equals the tangent of alpha two okay and we know the equation of uh, or how to calculate the tangent which is for the case of alpha two we have y hat minus y a and x minus x a okay on the other hand for tangent two tangent of alpha two we have y b minus y a divided by x b minus x a okay so now we have this equation which allows us to interpolate our value y but instead of using y using a good enough approximation which would be uh, y hat okay let's develop this a bit more okay in a new slide and if you remember we have um, y hat minus uh, y uh, a okay divided by x minus x a and this is equal to y b minus y a divided by x b minus x a so since what we want to have is this here okay let's do some work and say that y hat equals to x minus x a times y b minus y a divided by x b minus x a plus y a okay so this is the function that pandas use to interpolate in between two points this interpolation would be for example think of a series in which we have a three here an n a n and a five if we use on this series called s s dot interpolate okay pandas will use this function here okay to calculate this uh n a n here given that pandas know the 
values uh, on the sides of DNA, okay? So that's how linear interpolation works. For other methods of interpolation, I recommend you to read the, the documentation, okay? But in the end, linear interpolation gives us a good enough approximation for what we are going to do. And, uh, uh, but it's not the best, okay? So for each, uh, each uh, series, each distribution of data, you will find a better uh, function or approximation uh, to use in, in interpolate, okay? So now let's move from the, uh, from the text, from the written part to the coded part, okay? And let's start using interpolate on our data frames, okay? So um, first of all, I'm going to import pandas and numpy, okay? And I'm going to create the data frame with which we will, uh, we will work with, okay? This data frame, as you can see, contains three columns, column A, column B, and column C. And uh, each one of them ha uh, has been uh, has uh, data associated that has been calculated in different manners. For example, for column A, I'm using the logarithm of each value in between 1 and 25. For column B, I'm using the square values in between uh, 20, uh, 26 and 50. And for column C, I'm using double of the value in between 51 and 75. Okay? So, if we execute this and we check what our data frame looks like, we can see that we have uh, a data frame with, uh, with columns and values, okay? And the values are numbers. Some of them are uh, integers, some of them are floats, okay? Now, in order to, um, to uh, insert artificially uh, missing values, okay, I'm going to take the same, uh, the same approach, okay, with, uh, for our three columns, okay? And I'm going to create a new data frame that using the same uh, uh, operations to create the numbers, it's also going to insert some none. For example, in column A for uh, uh, even positions, for column B in, uh, sorry, not even positions, when the, when the value is um, uh, even, uh, for column B when the value is divisible by 10, and for column C when the value is divisible by 3, okay? so. This data frame looks like this, okay, as we could expect. And uh, now we can see that we have some NAN here, okay. Let's get a bit more of information from here using SNA, okay. We see our, the mask with trues and falses, okay. But now let's use, for example, mean to see what's the mean value of NANs in each of the columns. We can see that column A receives, uh, received a lot of NANs. In fact, 48% of the new column A is NAN, and column B and column C also had some NANs, okay? So now the nice thing about uh, using interpolation in, in Pandas is that it's as simple as using the data frame that contains the NANs, we can use the method dot interpolate on it, okay? As you can see, the I'm not I'm passing uh, no argument because the default argument is the linear interpolation, which is the one I want to use, and I'm saving the result of this interpolation in a new variable that contains the data frame with the interpolated values, okay? So if you execute this, okay, we can see that most of the NANs have been removed, except for this one here, okay? The problem with this one here is, as we were talking about interpolation, remember that interpolation needs a value before and after the, the missing gap in order to be able to infer the position of our y hat, okay? Since this NAN doesn't have a previous value, pandas cannot uh, interpolate here. So this is one of the limitations, okay? But uh, it's not a limitation, it's in the definition of interpolation. We need to be in the... Um, in the known range in order to interpolate, okay? So now we have filled our uh, NANs with interpolated values, which look uh, very much alike to the original values that we, that we defined, okay? So how can we actually check what's the error of this interpolation, okay? Well, the most basic uh, calculation of the error is uh, just subtracting the, from my original data the interpolated data. So we can do that straight away with pandas, okay, by subtracting one, uh, the interpolated data frame to the original data frame, okay? And we can see that 
the error or the difference in between the interpolated value and the actual value it's quite small okay very it's a it's a very good uh, approximation for the original values okay so now uh, you know the how to use interpolate with pandas what's interpolation and how linear interpolation works okay so thank you very much for listening to this and if you have any question you know what to do bye bye